Hi, my name is Justin Douglas with Northeast Fishing Adventures. We're here today to talk about some of the things that would work early in the year, right after ice out. It seems how everybody's been having questions about that, especially on like main open water fishing Facebook page. <laughs> First things we're going to go over is going to be the blade bait. This lure is meant to be fished deep after ice out in about 15 to 35 plus feet of water. It is one of the most productive fishing lures when it comes to cold water fishing. And all you do is you, they have different models. This is a hidden sonar. There also is the Silver Buddy and the Vibe, which are popular. Basically, the half ounce is the go-to size. You want to use about 15, 15 pound monofilament on a bait caster is your best bet. It's like a fast gear ratio, seven to one, and a medium action rod because you, it doesn't have split rings. You don't want it to get leverage and pull your hooks out. So a little bit softer rod is better for that. The blade bait is mostly used out on deep rock structure for small mouths. Once in a while, it is used for large mouths. They don't, it doesn't tend to be work as well as as a small mouths, but it does work. It's also a good lure, not just for spring, but for fall, right before the ice starts to form. It's pretty easy to use, you just kind of cast it out. You let it sink to the very bottom and you just kind of lift slowly and pick up the line with your reel and let it drop. And you just do that right back to the boat. Usually a bite on it will just feel like a weight. There won't be a huge, because of how cold the water is, there will not be a hard strike. It'll just feel like a mush. <laughs> and then the second thing we're gonna talk about, jerk baits, because that is one of the, two, the best lures to use from when the water is about Right after ice, I was probably going to be high 30s. And it's very productive it's up to about, probably about 55 to 58 degrees. It kind of peters out. When you first start using it, like in the morning or in colder water, the northeast and Maine, they tend to bite the brighter colors. I have not, have no idea why, but it seems to work better than the natural. If it's really bright out, something like this, that's clear bodied or cut. This is crystal shad. The other one was hot steel. It is more of a in-between color. It tends to work no matter what, as long when it's cold, but it is a little bit better later in the day when you need a more natural look to it. It kind of looks like a white, white perch, which a lot of bass like to eat, especially in places like Little Sebago and Panther and Crescent. These lures, I recommend the lighter ones, use them on a spinning rod, because you get more distance out of them. It tends to be windy in the spring. <laughs> Same with the X-Wrap, I recommend a spin rod for that. It is not a heavy lure. If you are to throw in a bait caster, you might have trouble with it if it happens to have a decent breeze. Shadow wraps are pretty light. I would use even the deeper ones on a spinning rod, not a bait caster. The KVD jerk bait, I recommend throwing on bait casting equipment. It is a heavier lure and has more resistance to it. And it's easier to get the jerking motion out of the side to side action with a bait caster than a spinning rod. It was like a seven to one gear ratio reel, six to one, mother, something like that for a bait caster. Spinning reels mostly are all five to one gear ratio, the six to ones, which is perfect for speed speed for the smaller baits. Where you want to be able to pick up line fast and get it deeper and get the action out of it. With a jerk bait, the best action is to just like a flick of the wrist, do a few spurts and then just pause it. And depending on how cold the water is, is how fast you want to go. If it's really cold, you want to go very slow and pause for longer periods of time. Once the water gets up into like the 50s, mid 50s, you can rip the thing and then pause it for shorter periods of time and the reaction bite will get, you'll get more of a reaction bite and you'll get big fish doing that. It seems like it gets more numbers the faster you go when the water starts to warm up in size. And when the water warms up as well, when it starts getting into pushing the 60 degree range, you want to go with more natural colors. It seems like bright clown colors or hot steel colors do not work as well when the water gets up to close to the 60 degrees. You want to stick to more natural. Oh, I didn't even talk about when they use jerk. Oh. Turn it off for a second. <laughs> with jerk baits as well, the colder water seems like the deeper ones work better because it stays in the face, fish's face longer and you get it more of a react. You can get it. That came out like crap. <laughs> <laughs> for jerk baits, I recommend starting out with a deeper one because early in the spring, when the water's colder, they tend to hang out a little bit deeper, and they'd be a little bit more in a neutral to negative mood. So you need it to be right in their face. If you don't have it right in their face, 
your chances of getting a bite are far less. <laughs> and then when it gets a little bit warmer, go into the using a shallower one because the bass tend to start moving up shallow right before they start to spawn. And there'll be decent groups of them in areas like you saw in our first video we put up from last year. We hit, found a group stacked one little spot in a bay because of the warm water that was being pushed in by the wind. And if you can find that, you can find the heck of a lot of fish. <laughs> Next thing on the list is the lipless crankbait. It is a classic for cold water right up into about mid, mid to late spring. Some, some places it is very good later in the year. We'll go into that some other point in a different video. But in the spring, you want something that's a little bit slower falling than the normal lipless crankbait, a little bit lighter. This is a 3 8 ounce Yamamoto lipless crankbait. It's about the same size as most half ounce. It works good even in shallow water. It doesn't have to be out deep ripping it. You can rip it in like two to three feet and not have to worry about snagging quite as often in the weeds. A lot of people like red eye shads and rattle traps. Rattle traps tend to be a little bit, and red eye shads tend to be a little bit heavier, but they have their applications as well. Like if you're out in about six to eight feet of water, you can rip those through the grass, these rip them through the grass and get a reaction bite that way. Sometimes you can reel like a spinner bait straight retrieve and get bites as well. These tend to work better in the spring in places that are a little bit murkier, like Three Mile Pond, Sabatis, places like that, where you need a little bit more vibration and action. Jerk baits don't tend to work in the dingier water as a locust crankbait will. Oh <laughs> shit! Also with a locust crankbait, I'd recommend like a medium action bait caster, you get better control with a bait caster than you would with a spinning rod. Same with the next thing we're going to talk about, spinner bait, definitely I'll be using a bait caster. I recommend a softer tip for fishing with a... <laughs> wow! <laughs> That's what she said. Dang it! See you. <laughs> See? Alright, go ahead. With a little bit of crate bait, you definitely want a softer tip like you do the blade bait. So the hooks don't rip out in case you do get that big fish. You don't want the chance of the lighter wire hooks bending or tearing out of the fish. They also make crankbait rods that like the crank and stick, which I have right here. <laughs> you probably have to edit that out. The crank and stick is very good for crankbaiting rod. You can probably use this as a blade bait rod too. I recommend a little bit longer rod though for using a this crankbait like a seven footer, just because it's easier to control the fish with it and not tear out the hooks. I don't know if that came out good or not. <laughs> ah, but a great. <laughs> so next thing on the list is a spinner bait. In spring I'd recommend using like a 3 8 out chow and slow roll in it. Later on when it starts to get a little bit warmer close to the 60s you can burn them a little bit faster. If you need to get a little bit more depth use like a half to three quarter ounce like out in the deeper weed edges and up in the deeper out in the deeper sections of the lake. With that, I tend to pair it up with a, like a swim bait just to make it, give it a little bit more bulk to get bigger fish to be more attracted to it. It's all preference. You do not need one of these on your lure, on the lure. You don't need a trailer. You can just use a trailer hook to get your hookup ratios better. One of these, though, you can't really use a trailer hook. It kind of gets in the way. With a trailer hook, your hookup ratios will be much better in the spring. If you're not using it with a trailer, definitely use a trailer hook. Because they like to come up and just slap at your lure, not always fully get in their mouth. And you'll get misses, short strikers if you do not have a trailer hook. I will take this though, the chance of getting a bigger fish, have it on my spinner bait. I prefer titanium spinner baits because they don't break as easy as well. This one is not a titanium, but if you can find the titanium terminators, they hold up much better and will last a lot longer. They might be a little bit more expensive, but you'll catch dozens of fish in a lure on like one of these stainless ones which tend to break after about a handful, maybe eight fish. <laughs> if you're not paying attention, don't ever flip them in with these. <laughs> the last thing on the list is the jig. Jig will work no matter what time of year. Always have one in your boat. It is good for flipping wood, good for dragging across rock piles, and it's good in grass. Don't ever leave the boat ramp without one. In the spring it can be very vital to catching giants because it looks a lot like a crayfish or a sunfish on the bottom. Especially later in the spring when they start spawning. I prefer to use something like a pit boss or a crayfish trailer, crayfish type looking trailer on the back end to give it more bulk 
you tend to catch a heck of a lot more fish with a trailer on your jig. If you use it plain, they pretty much just ignore it. Other options for trailers on a jig are swim baits. Where you can on your jig, you can use it like a, you can swim it, which will look more like a bluegill or sunfish perch, something like that. Sometimes they later in the year when they start getting more and more active, they will take a swim bait, a swimming jig, more than they will one dragged on the bottom. In the springtime, places to look for when they start coming up shallow are wood and rock. Wood and rock hold hold heat. The water warms up around that area and more fish will congregate there. Also, an overlook spot like beachfront properties, the sand in front of those warms up quite a bit and will attract bait fish and fish. It also attracts trout as well, which you will catch, generally will catch by accident on some of these lures like the lipless crankbait and the jerkbait. And if you want to target trout in the spring, a good option is downsizing those baits and fishing those areas as well instead of trolling. We have caught quite a few trout just fishing the bank. Now that we're talking about trout a little bit, you'll probably see some in the videos coming up that we start doing this year. I didn't have anything in them last year. There's a good chance of catching them. If you downsize your jerk baits and your lipless crankbaits, you can catch some just bank fishing, like fishing from the bank or fishing towards the bank in about, say, two to eight feet of water. You don't have to be out deep trolling in 15 to 20 feet. I've caught plenty of rainbow trout by accident on baits like the crystal shad. Seems big, but I've caught rainbow trout on these things trying to catch bass. With those, you could also probably throw a little inline spinner and get them to bite. In the springtime, if you, after they have stocked, you'll see them kind of surfacing on this, surfacing. It kind of looks like a pot of white perch. So keep an eye out for those. You may be able to get yourself some dinner as well. We're going to go to the equipment now with the reels. You definitely want, this is a 7 to 1 gear ratio reel which is good for jerk baiting and blade baiting when you need to pick up a lot of line and you also get you can get better action at the bigger jerk baits using a faster gear ratio reel than a slower one and then you and you can still fish it slow if you have to you just gotta adjust the twitches more than you you reeling the reel when it comes to jerk baiting you can buy a spin reel like this at any of the Bass Pro, Cabela's or Dick's in the area for a really tight of cheap, this is a $60 one. It will last you a few years. You don't really need to have top of the line with spinning gear. Bait casting, I tend to stick to $100 or more price range. So they last longer. If you're using the cheaper bait casters, if you fish as much as me, they tend to break on me. Like we were talking about earlier, this is a spinning reels. Most of the typical gear ratios of 5 to 1. That is great for smaller jerk baits in it. Even though it's a slower gear ratio than bait casting reel, the bigger the spool, the faster it will be the reel in your line. Lines I recommend for especially the jerk baits, monofilament, fluorocarbon, in about 10 to 12 pound test. If you want to stay, keep your bait really deep, a little bit deeper, stick with fluorocarbon. On spinning reels, I recommend more using monofilament. You don't tend to have the tangles and the messes like you would if you had the fluorocarbon. It's a different memory aspects of it and I don't really like using braid if you use braid I just recommend the leader with the little hooks like these on the shad wrap you'll bend those out on a three plus pound fish pretty easy blade, blade baits and lipless crank baits I use like the same type of line I'd use like 15 pound monofilament put it on a bait caster like a six to one and seven to one I wouldn't go any slower than either of those or any faster than those because you'll be going too fast for the fish. You want you just want that gear ratio to pick up your line when you're setting the hook. The last thing I'm going to talk about with this equipment right now is with a jig, I recommend using 17, 20 pound mono fluorocarbon, especially in the northeast. The water is very clear. I don't really recommend using braid, especially in the early spring, maybe later in the year in this grass. It is a good option to use braid, but in the spring I would stick to translucent lines and a Fluorocarbon is much tougher than a braid will be. I have broken 65 pound braid on a rock uh, with a four pound fish on a rock just by touching it. That is all I got for you for, for this video. Please like and subscribe to our channel, Northeast Fishing Adventures. We plan on keeping you updated all year with more tip, tips and more videos throughout the season in different states. We plan on trying to do pike, trout, even some odd things like possibly bowfin 
over in New Hampshire. I'm going to try to stick to Maine, New Hampshire, maybe Massachusetts as of the time being, but we'd like to expand further south or north to try to get more content for you. And the more views and the more subscribers and the more likes and we get, the more likely we'll be able to do that for you. <laughs> Best closeout ever. <laughs>